Hello, everyone. It is one minute until the webinar starts, so we'll just wait for a few more people to join, and then we'll get it started right at 12. Thanks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the What Works webinar series hosted by Workforce Windsor Essex. This episode is called What Works Strengthening Your Workforce Expertise, and we'll focus on informing employers how to find and use certain labor market research or labor market information resources in order to strengthen their workforce expertise. We understand that being aware of specific labor market information and knowing how to use it is important for employers so that they are able to perform their jobs to the fullest potential. My name is Corey Shankin and I will be the host of your webinar today. Through my time today, I hope to talk about our local population, local promising sectors and industry trends, and other projects, tools, and resources available from Workforce Windsor Essex. We have a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time, so we will try to keep this webinar moving at a good pace. That said, if you have any questions at any time, please excuse me, please feel free to use the question slash discussion box on the right hand side of your screen. We will pause the webinar in order to answer your questions as we go along. If your question will be answered as part of our webinar material, then we will hold off answering it until we reach part the part of until we reach that part of the webinar. You'll notice that there are handouts that we have provided provided as well. These are copies of some of our resources that may be of value to you. Today, downloadable on the right hand side of your screen in the right in the handout section is a list of all the links I will be showing you today and a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. If you are aware of any other peers in your field who would benefit from this webinar, then be sure to tell them we will be posting a recording of the webinar on our website so it will be available for viewing at a later date. So without further ado, let's start today's session. Sorry, pardon me. Some of the audience today might not be aware of exactly what we do at Workforce Windsor Essex. Workforce Windsor Essex serves the Windsor Essex region as the local employment planning council. At Workforce Windsor Essex, our, plan, our mandate is to plan, facilitate, and advocate for regional development defined as the development, retention, and recruitment of a wide range of skilled workers to meet the current and future economic and social development needs of Windsor Essex. In December 2015, Workforce Windsor Essex was informed by the Ontario Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development that it was selected to be the Local Employment Planning Council, or LEPKE, for the Windsor Essex area as part of a pilot project. The objective of the LEPKE pilot is aimed at improving conditions in the local communities through improved collection and dissemination of local labor market information and community engagement to drive local approaches in the planning and delivery of employment and training services. Some of the activities undertaken by the LEPKE include community partnership, service coordination for employers, integrated local planning, research and innovation, analysis and dissemination of local labor market information, and sharing of best practices. The activities of the LEPKE are governed by a central planning table that is comprised of a variety of stakeholders in Windsor-Essex from different sectors. 
In addition, there are three working groups, employer engagement, service provision, and intergovernmental partnerships. Within this structure, we are engaging all of our existing partners and exploring and forming new partnerships. This project is funded in part by the Government of Canada and the Government of Ontario. Another project at, project at Workforce Windsor Essex is WeSkills. As part of the WeSkills project, Workforce Windsor Essex provides the following programs and services to the community. WeSkills database, which is a regional skills database comprised of local resumes that the city can use to help, find, to help businesses find potential candidates for hire. WeJobs, the, dis the distribution, I will actually be going over the WeSkills database in more detail later on. WeJobs, the distribution of local job postings, job fairs, and short-term training opportunities. Connect, they connect job seekers and employers to local service providers and programs. They identify, collect, and share news articles relating to business growth and expansion, new apprenticeship job postings, job postings that require French speaking candidates and they engage the community through workshops and booths at local events to share local labor market information. Last but not least, we have the Windsor Essex Local Immigration Partnership or WELIP, which is an initiative of the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Citizenship Canada, or IRCC, to encourage communities across Ontario to develop a comprehensive plan for the delivery of newcomer services. The WELIP initiative represents a process to examine the whole system of services currently available and considers how the system could be enhanced to facilitate access to service and to promote the long-term settlement and integration of immigrant newcomers into Windsor and Essex County. In November 2008, the City of Windsor was given the lead for the Windsor-Essex Local Immigration Partnership, or WELIP, and they are in control of it now. The WELIP engages stakeholders through information sharing, events, and locally driven strategic planning process to help make Windsor-Essex a more welcoming and inclusive community. The partnership strives to assist non-settlement service providers and the community in developing a greater understanding of newcomer needs and services. Our goal is to create a community where newcomers and citizens can achieve a higher quality of life and reach their full potential. We strive to accomplish this by fostering community, which, con which, contrib which contributes to our mutual goal, that every new member of our community feels like they truly belong and can successfully contribute to the social and economic fabric of Windsor-Essex. Now that you know a bit about more about the projects going on at Workforce Windsor Essex will we'll move into now about data about our city and our region that employers can use to their benefit. So a large part of what we look at is local labor market information or LMI for short. This information is very important for the career process. However, exactly what is LMI? LMI is information about the jobs in any location and in our case Windsor Essex. LMI includes information about jobs that are available in certain locations and or sectors, salaries and or wages tied to jobs, employers that are hiring and or laying off, working conditions, what employees are looking for, for example, certain skill sets in employees, job areas that will grow or shrink, unemployment rates, the education and or training needed for certain jobs or sectors, and information about the people who are working in a location or sector. So you can get to this. We have what is called a local labor market information hub on our website. And it is available at this link here. This link is also available in one of the handouts downloadable for you today. Um, so if you're looking for any specific type of LMI, this is a great place to find it. So ex for example, if you're looking at the edu looking for the educational attainment of Windsor Essex, you can click here. And eventually a page will load that has some nice visual graphics about the educational attainment for our region. Now go back 
to the presentation. So the following is an example of how employers can use uh, what we have. We actually have another uh, resource on our website called a data request, which, um, which allows employers for which allows employers to request this type of data to use for their own um, use. Um, so I'll be giving a case study, an example of how the data request can be used. But here on our website, um, every page, I believe, except for the landing page, has this, uh, this square on it. So can't find labor market data you need, send, click here to send us your request. Um, you click on here and it will bring you to the page that I already had loaded. And you can request us to do a data uh, data retrieval for you. So you just fill in your first name, your last name, job title, single line of text, your email. So And you can specify what type of labor market information you are requesting. So if you want um, the educational data, again, you can click on this, fill that in. And if you can get it um, sorted by different... <laughs> By gender, by age, by municipality, by year, you can select all of those. Tell us a bit about your request. If you require some more specific data, send that request. That request will get sent either directly to me or one of our other researchers, Katie. It is free, and we usually have the data request back to you within 24 hours. And returning to the presentation. So what we have on the screen now is a case study of how employers can use data requests to their benefits. So um, if you just want to follow along with what's on the screen. Greg Greenhouse is a fictional greenhouse located in Leamington, has 80 employees, including three IT staff. They generally have a good retention rate, but they often experience turnover with their IT staff and struggle to fill the positions when they post them again. They currently pay their network technician $18.50 per hour and pay their two business analysts $17 an hour and $21 an hour, one of which has two years of experience and the other seven years of experience. Wondering whether wage is affecting their retention rate and ability to hire for these positions, they contact Workforce Windsor Essex and are provided with the following wage information for the Leamington area. Looking at this table, they determine they should be paying their network technician at least $20.44 per hour to be competitive in Leamington, if not more. Additionally, they decide to increase the wage of their less experienced business analyst to $25 an hour and that of their more experienced analyst to $36 an hour. Furthermore, they create a plan to increase their IT staff's wages incrementally according to the percentile information in the future. This is an example of how small businesses can improve their employee relations simply by contacting Workforce Windsor Essex to make a quick inquiry. They were able to to realize they were underpaying their employees and fix the issue as a result. So the next um, section of this webinar will just go over some helpful information, labor market information about our region that might be of interest to some employers. So we'll start it off with um, the population by age group. So first let's take a look at our population. From 2011 to 2016, the population of Windsor-Essex has changed in size as well as age distribution. The population of Windsor-Essex had a 2.6% 2 2 positive change in population, which is an increase of 10,171 people. Windsor-Essex also has an aging population. Age groups over the age of 55 saw the greatest percentage increases in their groups between 2011 and 2016 
with ages 65 to 74 experiencing the largest increase of 26.3%. This is likely due to an influx of retirees from outside the area. The prime working age population of 25 to 54 saw an average decrease in population by 3%, which could be a problem in the future for employers who are trying to find um, individuals from a smaller talent pool of prime working age population. We can also take a look at our region's educational attainment. Overall, the population of Windsor-Essex has a range of educational attainment. 40% of those in Windsor-Essex aged 25 to 64 have a secondary school diploma or less, while 7% have an apprenticeship or trade certificate or diploma, and 52% have a college or university level education. Windsor-Essex has a lower level of educational attainment than the Ontario average. There can be a negative effect of 40% of the working aged population having only a high school diploma or less, as employers may find it hard to, find, to fill skilled positions, and this population may also find it difficult to find stable, fairly paid employment. One in four people in Windsor-Essex is an immigrant, which refers to a person who is or has ever been a landed immigrant or a permanent resident. A total of 85,810 people in Windsor-Essex are immigrants. Of these immigrants, 10,800 are newcomers who settled in Windsor-Essex between 2011 and 2016. A newcomer is an immigrant who has been here for five years or less. Considering the population in Windsor-Essex increased by 10,171 people between 2011 and 2016, Windsor-Essex might have otherwise had a decrease in population without the arrival of newcomers. Immigrants are well-educated with 70% 70% possessing a minimum of high school diploma and 47% possessing a post-secondary education. And the majority of those who migrate into Windsor-Essex are from outside of Canada. We are also often approached with inquiries um, at Workforce Windsor-Essex related to in-demand jobs and in-demand sectors. So we're, current, we're asked questions such as, what are promising sectors in the region and what industries are currently hiring? So our current local promising sectors include construction, professional, scientific, and technical services, healthcare and social assistance, manufacturing, repair and maintenance, and education. So we'll go through these sectors pretty quickly with just a few highlights for each of these sectors. The first sector we'll be looking at today is construction. So as you may know, we have a few large construction projects coming our way, including the Gordie Howe International Bridge and the Mega Hospital. There will be specific roles required for the actual bridge building, such as iron workers and heavy equipment operators, but there are numerous additional roles that will be required for other bridge-related projects such as carpenters for building toll booths. There are currently 7,977 jobs in Windsor-Essex in the construction sector, and the top five occupations expecting growth are construction trades laborers, heavy equipment operators, electricians, and carpenters, and, sorry, iron workers. The second sector we will be reviewing today will be professional, scientific, and technical services. Tech can involve anything from mobile app development to software development to social media or graphic design. It is an ever-changing sector with new jobs such as social media writer popping up all the time. We also see jobs in tech spread across all different sectors because we know all different sectors use some form of technology nowadays. So. We have a large number, we have a large, we have a number, excuse me, of larger and smaller firms involved in tech in our region. And many community members are employed across the border in this sector. And the top five occupations expecting growth in this sector in Windsor-Essex are mechanical engineers, information systems analysts, biological engineers, paralegals, and computer programmers and interactive media developers. The next sector we will cover today is healthcare and social assistance. The sector is currently experiencing what is known as a silver tsunami as we witness an increased number of retirements in certain occupations as well as increased demand for healthcare services. 
There are currently 20,353 jobs in this sector in Windsor, Essex, and the top five occupations expecting growth are registered nurses, nurse aides, orderlies, and patient service associates, food counter attendants and kitchen helpers, social and community service workers, nursing coordinators and supervisors. The next sector is manufacturing. And individuals often feel as though manufacturing is dark, dirty, and dangerous, and they really don't want to go there. However, this is not the case whatsoever. Many jobs in manufacturing involve the use of a computer to guide machines automatically. Manufacturing is the largest sector in Windsor, Essex, and offers the most current jobs. The sector is extremely important to the region for its economic imperative. There are currently 30,600 85 jobs in manufacturing in Windsor, Essex, and the top five occupations expecting growth are laborers in metal fabrication, machining tool operators, industrial engineering and manufacturing technologists and technicians, plastic, assemb plastic products assemblers, finishers and inspectors, and metal products machine operators. Another sector that ties in directly with um, manufacturing is repair and maintenance. So we live in a car-driven area, so there will always be a need for repairs, particular, particularly there is a high demand for truck repair. Truck repair should remain to be in demand with the high volume of trucking conducted in our region, with expected numbers of trucks on the road to increase in the near future. Specialized cleaner is a job path to consider in this sector. Think about the inside of a truck trailer and the materials that are being carried. If a hazardous material is carried from one destination to the other, the trailer will need to be cleaned thoroughly before another um, material is carried in the same trailer. So the trailers need to be clean before carrying anything new. There are currently 2014 jobs in Windsor, Essex in this sector, and the top five occupations, occupations excuse me, expecting growth are welders and related machine operators, automotive service technicians, truck and bus mechanics and mechanical repairers, specialized cleaners, laborers in metal fabrication, and contractors and supervisors of mechanic trades. The final sector we will review today will be education. This is a sector that has been on and off of our in-demand sectors over the past uh, few years but it has found itself back on retirement and this is the reason why retirements in this sector and an increase in our population due to immigration is driving up enrollment in schools french speaking also continues to be a demand in this sector there are many roles to consider when looking at education there are currently 4062 jobs in windsor essex in education and the top five occupations expecting growth are elementary and secondary school teacher assistants post-secondary teaching and research assistants, secondary and elementary school teachers and educational counselors, janitors, caretakers and building superintendents, and elementary school and kindergarten teachers. So that was just an overview of our most in-demand sectors and jobs in the region. And now we will move on to some resources and tools that uh, Workforce Windsor Essex has available that employers should find very interesting and helpful. So some information that also may prove helpful to employers is the characteristics of the labor force in Windsor, Essex. Overall, the labor force was healthy in 2016 with the unemployment rate in the region at 7.3%. However, the majority of unemployment is located disproportionately in the city of Windsor and the township of Peely. Windsor's unemployment, unemployment rate is more concerning, though, as more employment opportunities are available in the city. It is important that work continues to be done with those in Windsor who face barriers to employment to ensure they are able to access employment opportunities. The labor force in our region saw significant improvement from 2011 to 2016 as employment grew and, under, and unemployment dropped. The only concern was the increase in those not in the labor force meaning those who are not working or actively looking for work, which increased by 3,090 people and had a negative effect on the region's overall participation rate. A challenge that Windsor Essex faces due to its labor force characteristics is one of the lowest participation rates in all of Canada. A low participation rate hinders the ability of employers to find employees as the available workforce is smaller than it could be. 
An opportunity that can be taken advantage of with Windsor Essex's current labor force landscape is to encourage populations who are not in the labor force to enter the labor force. There are a number of actions that can be taken to do this, including more affordable and conveniently located childcare, increased micro employment opportunities, fair wages for low skilled positions, and investments in public transportation to ensure job opportunities can be accessed by all. So another helpful resource that Workforce Windsor Essex provides is our quarterly survey results. Workforce Windsor Essex asks employers to complete surveys each quarter or every three months to improve the access to and quality of the region's labor market information. We look at the demand side of our workforce through surveying local employers to understand in-demand occupations, hard to fill positions, and skills to, to fill these jobs. Following the conclusion of each survey, a bulletin with the findings is released to the public and is available on the Workforce Windsor Essex website. All data collected in these surveys remains confidential and is only reported on the aggregate. So I will let you see where this page is on our website. It is right here. This link is also included on your um, in your handout section today on a list of links that I'm going over. So if you go to the quarterly surveys page, you can see a list of our previous quarterly surveys um, available in French and English and then divided also into sectors. So uh, an example would be if you want to click here to look at our most recently published results. Once it loads, maybe. You can see that we have a lot of different helpful um, statistics on here. So 62% of employers plan to hire in these in this three month period. Um, you find hard to fill positions, top hired positions and whatnot. So that is how you access the quarterly survey information from our website. I'm just trying to get back to the presentation here. There you go. So that's just a screenshot, a screen grab of the results I believe I just showed you. So an example of helpful data that can be withdrawn from our quarterly surveys are which jobs are in demand and which jobs are hard to fill. A position that is in demand is one that employers are currently hiring many workers for, and a position that is hard to fill is one that employers are having difficulty filling, which can be due to a multitude of reasons, such as a lack of qualified candidates. Our latest quarterly survey or as you can see here, some of the hard, hard to fill positions that um, this survey from March to April 2017 identified were chef, CNC machinist, controls engineer, cook, cost estimator, dye designer, mold maker, mechanical engineer, retail, so, retail sales associate, and quality slash ISO coordinator. The data we collect from our quarterly survey is just some of the important labor force information that we disseminate into the community. Some other helpful in, info we gather comes from tools we use inside the office, such as the program Talent Neuron. So Talent Neuron is actually one of the many research tools we use at Workforce Windsor Essex to conduct our research. Um, its primary function is to allow viewers to see job demand reports for specific jobs in specific regions. Uh, an example of the information you can find on Talent Neuron is the top skills employers are hiring for in a region. And what Talent Neuron does is it tracks online job postings related to the job you search for. So that is how it knows this, this information. So for example, in 2017, there were 14,872 online job postings in the region tracked by Talent Neuron from almost 5,000 unique employers. And the top five technical skills that employers were looking for were blueprint reading, freight plus software, forklift operation, bilingualism, and preventative maintenance. And the top five soft skills, according to employers, were 
detail oriented, oral and written communication, team player, customer service oriented, and dependability. These data inquiries allow us at Workforce Windsor Essex to identify certain challenges and opportunities in the community. For example, through a multitude of research conducted with these tools, we identified that there are not enough candidates to fill positions and businesses may not be operating at full capacity as positions go unfilled or are filled by individuals who are not fully qualified for the given position. Of course, we attempt to come up with solutions for each of the challenges we identify. For example, to address, the, to address the issue above, our community could find ways to educate or train the unemployed and youth about in-demand positions and connect them to services to find these jobs. So, I think I meant to talk about it here, but I mentioned it earlier and the data requests that you can make on our website. So, you, you can visit the web page that I showed you earlier, fill out all the sections that you would like to receive data for, and like I said, we're pretty good with our response rate to data requests and depending on the size of the request, and we will usually provide you a response within 24 hours. So moving on into more resources that will be valuable for employers in this webinar. So at Workforce Windsor Essex, we believe that LMI are very important, labor market information or LMI, and other forms of data are very valuable and should be shared with community stakeholders as often as possible to build a stronger workforce and working relations within the community. So like I said, the next section of our webinar will be dedicated to the numerous resources and tools available from Workforce Windsor Essex that can be used in a multitude of ways to create a stronger and more well-informed workforce in Windsor Essex. So the first is our guide to recruitment and retention for small business in Windsor Essex. The guide was developed developed to help small businesses consider different approaches for recruiting and retaining talent, including topics like interviewing, onboarding, offering perks, investing in employees, and others. So this guide can be found on our website. And... Here it is, uh, this link is also available on the handouts list today that I have provided for you. So if you come to this page, you will see that the, at, that the business and recruitment and retention guide is available for download in English and French. So you can download whichever one you want to read. And as an employer, you can use the guide to help you with recruitment and retention of talent for your small business. And these methods often translate into medium and, and large business sizes as well. Um, considering local best practices and labor market information as you implement strategies found in the guide. So through research, we found that 70% of employers face challenges in the recruitment of employees and 42% face challenges in retaining existing employees. We wanted to understand these challenges in more detail while also gathering information on some local employer-driven techniques and initiatives that are being implemented. The purpose of this booklet is to aggregate and share a host of resources to encourage other businesses that might be experiencing similar challenges, options to consider that can be used and implemented to improve recruitment and retention of employees. So the first section of the booklet is dedicated to tips on recruitment for employers, as you can see here. So for example, what type of method are employers using to recruit? We found that most employers use online job boards, such as Indeed. We also inform employers in this book how to post an effective job posting with a clear job description and a clear distinction between assets and requirements, like skills needed for the job, um, description of compensation, perks, and workplace culture, and effective methods of posting the job itself. Next, we have the interview process and the onboarding employees to the company. It is important that employers are prepared with questions beforehand for the interview process, decide on the process itself, involve other team members, and get creative. Once the candidate is chosen, it is important for the employer to put together a solid contract and to orient new hires. 
We also go over in this report the different types of workers available in Windsor and the benefit in Windsor Essex, excuse me, and the benefits of each, such as newcomers having good technical skills or students bringing new perspectives and innovative pr approaches to old problems. The second half of and conclusion of the report are dedicated to effectively onboarding an employee. and tips for retaining them for the foreseeable future. Some tips for onboarding are making sure they're comfortable on their first day and making sure their duties and their roles are clearly spelled out for them so they're not confused at all of what they have to do. Some tips for retention for employees are fostering a friendly team environment and or providing perks for your employees. We actually conducted a webinar in the past on this guide only, which goes over it in much greater detail and you can actually find a recording of this webinar under our webinar page section. And if you go to What Works, Find and Keep Great Employees, right here, you can view the script for the webinar in English and French by clicking here, and you can watch a recording of the webinar by entering your name and email here. So, like I said, that was just a full presentation dedicated to this guide, so you can look at it in more detail. I'm returning to the PowerPoint presentation. A small section of the small business guide is to inform employers on how beneficial experiential learning opportunities are and can be for them. So we at Workforce Windsor Essex are strong believers in experiential learning opportunities and believe these can be extremely beneficial to employers who take advantage of them. Experiential learning helps connect classroom learning with workplace experiences. These experiences provide hands-on and work-integrated learning opportunities in addition to including an aspect of reflection. Examples of experiential learning include co-op placements, internships, apprenticeships, tours, and more. And I myself have had good experiences with experiential learning opportunities in the past. I was hired by this company actually as an intern from the University of Windsor, so I cannot speak enough on how Strongly, I support these types of experiential learning opportunities. Workforce Windsor, Esse Workforce Windsor Essex has created what is known as the Experiential Learning Hub to inform the population more about the benefits of experiential learning. We have created resources for employers, parents, and students in this hub, but for the purposes of this webinar, we will obviously focus on the employer guide to experiential learning. So are you an employer who would like to take advantage of these opportunities, but you don't know where to get started? This guide would be the perfect first step for you. So this guide is available as well on our website and you can find the link here. And that is also included on the handout of the list of links today that is downloadable on the right hand side of your screen. Um, so you land here on the landing page for Experiential Learning Hub <clears throat> and employers will obviously want to click on the download for the employer's guide available in French or English. So we'll click on the English one for now. Um, the guide goes over many steps for employers to help them better understand the experiential learning process and its benefits. So the first section of the report entails how employers can get involved in hosting an experiential learning opportunity with the first step being getting in touch with the program coordinator for experiential learning. The benefits of hosting an experiential learning opportunity are then laid out for the employer, such as participants bringing a fresh perspective and technological intuitiveness and being able to test run an employee for a potential future employee on the job and incentives in programs available for employers. Employers that currently participate in these experiences were then surveyed, with some of them providing quotes on why the experience was beneficial or good for them. Finally, the report goes over steps on how an employer can start to host an experiential learning candidate. 
the steps are as follows. You should set expectations for the participant and inform them of these expectations. Second, have the participant work on a meaningful activity throughout their placement. Third, include the participant in team activities. Fourth, make connections with the work the participant is doing and classroom learning. And five, evaluate the program and placement after completion. We believe this report and guide will be very, ben very beneficial to employers in the region who may be either aware or unaware of these experiential learning opportunities. And I forgot to put this in my script, but if you see here, we can actually help you in the process of matching you up with, an, uh, with a potential candidate for an experiential learning opportunity. So you just fill in this form here. Um, what kind of experience are you interested in providing? Um, you can select the educational level you're looking for for your potential placements, the municipality, and then this request will get sent directly to us and we'll get started with trying to set you up with someone who can help you with these requests. So, right, just returning now to the PowerPoint. So, an upcoming project that we have um, that we'll be releasing later this spring is called Newcomers, Your Skilled Workforce. This resource should also provide should also prove very beneficial to employers looking to strengthen their workforce. So earlier this year, we released a profile of local newcomer skill sets, highlighting their work experiences and education, demonstrating an available workforce. Over 300 newcomers have been surveyed with the help of local service providers, identifying their skills and past work experiences best practices stories, suggestions for diversifying workforces, and an overview of the business case for a diverse workforce will also be highlighted in this report. Preliminary findings from these survey results were shared at the Windsor-Essex Local Immigration Partnership Annual Forum on February 23rd. A profile of our findings, including the benefits of incorporating newcomers in your workforce and tips on how to do so successfully will be released in of 2018, if spring ever comes. Employment service providers can use the profile and skill sets to increase their ability to work with newcomers, and to better match newcomers with available employment opportunities. And an example of a way employers can use this is using the resource to recognize the skills of an available workforce and connect with employment service providers to find newcomers to meet their workforce needs. So right now, all we have is a status update for this project on our website because it is not actually complete. But if you want to go to this um, link, you can look at a you can look at when we update it, the project status. Most likely, the next project status update will be the actual report um, on posted on here itself sometime this spring. So we're looking forward to the release of that. Just going back to the presentation. Another couple of upcoming projects we have in the works. Um, the first of these is our Decoding the Information and Communication Technology, or ICT Workforce, in Windsor-Essex. This project aims to increase the development, attraction, and the retention of ICT talent in Windsor-Essex through three different initiatives. First, Workforce Windsor-Essex hosted an ICT leadership table for each quarter for employers, educators, students, workers, and community partners in ICT to meet and discuss local ICT issues and develop actions to address these issues. Second, we have worked with local ICT companies to develop six profile videos to showcase ICT opportunities in Windsor-Essex. Third, we have surveyed students, workers, employers, and educators to gain their perspective 
on ICT in Windsor Essex and have used these results along with existing data to write a report on the state of ICT in Windsor Essex, as well as a bulletin with recommendations to create an ICT brain gain in Windsor Essex. So you can learn more about the tech community and ICT in Windsor um, on our website. We have a landing page for this project as well. Um, WorkforceWindsorEssex.com slash tech dash, dash sector. So what we have here is if you want to, are you looking to hire a tech professional, which might be something an employer is looking to do. So we give some tips and some resources of how we can start getting you started and that we can begin getting you started in that process. Um, networking between tech, um, growing your tech capabilities, learning tech, this is more for job seekers, about tech and meeting the tech in our in our community. So what we have is um, some videos that we created um, for local companies, AlphaCore, we have Altaris, iDream, Pareto, Red Piston, Splice. So these are just some profiles of the local tech uh, companies that we have in our community. Um, moving on now back to the presentation. Uh, another upcoming project we'll talk about next that we think will prove valuable to employers in our region is our examining the participation rate project. So I spoke earlier about um, the participation rate and how Windsor has a historically low participation rate, which means that um, people who are eligible to participate in the labor force, um, but for some reason are choosing not to. So there's a high rate of that in Windsor Essex. This is for many reasons. So what our upcoming project hopes to address are some of the reasons why. So Windsor Essex has one of the lowest participation rates in Canada, meaning a large portion of the population is not looking for work. So we are going to develop a video report on the low participation rate, examining the factors behind the low rate in our region and what we can do about it. Uh, this is obviously important for employers. They want the, um, the participation rate to increase so they have a larger pool of candidates to choose from when they're hiring. Um, this report will hopefully support employers by providing them with reasons individuals are choosing not to enter the labor force so that the employers can hopefully take action to create perhaps new incentives in the workplace to attract more talent to participate in the current labor force. Um, so once again, this is an upcoming project, so the report itself has not been released, but you can still, there is a landing page for it on our website with a project overview, explaining a bit about our participation rate problem that we've had historically in Windsor and the project status, <clears throat> which is still in progress. Uh, we just recently conducted a phone survey and we got some interesting results that we're looking forward to sharing with you when the report comes out. Oh, just trying to get back to the PowerPoint slide show here. There we go. So, Projects that we run out of our office now that can support employers is, I guess, the next part of the presentation that I will be presenting. So another project run out of our project, run out of our office, part of me, is our We Skills department. This is a project that could definitely be beneficial to employers in search of new employees. So the section of this project that is especially helpful to employers looking to hire can be found at the following link. So I'll bring us back to the website. Um, and what WeSkills actually has is a looking to hire landing page. So are you an employer looking to hire? Um, so what happens is you can sign up here and as an employer, you can send us your job postings or if you're coming up 
and you're participating in a job fair, career fair, send that information to us. And we try to match this up with a database that we have of thousands of resumes with skill sets. So, for example, um, uh, the WeSkills database is comprised of local resumes that the City of Windsor can use to help businesses find potential candidates for hire. The WeSkills office also connects job seekers and employers to local service providers and programs and engages the community with booths and workshops at local events. Workforce Windsor Essex has a WeSkills database of thousands of resumes. They work with partnering employment service providers to collect the resumes of unemployed and underemployed individuals who may have the skills and experiences that employers are looking for. As a free service to providers, Workforce Windsor Essex can perform a search in our database to identify potential candidates and introduce you, the employer, to a job developer at a partnering employment service provider who can work with you on the rest of the candidate recruitment and hiring process. Our partnering, our partnering employment service providers also have access to wage and training incentives through the Government of Ontario and the Government of Canada. We identify resumes using your search criteria, introduce you to a partnering employment service provider contact, and advise our, part, and advise our partner which candidate in the database has the skills and experience they are looking for. Our partners then contact the employer directly and works with them to complete the rest of the recruitment and hiring process. WeSkills also identifies, collects, and shares news articles relating to business growth and expansion, new apprenticeship job postings, and job postings that require French-speaking candidates. So another resource on our website that can prove uh, very valuable to employers is our research option or research tool. Uh, this tool can be used in many ways for employers, such as providing new supports for new businesses, information on human resources activities for businesses, and networking opportunities for businesses, just to name a few. So this tool is available at the following landing page and URL. Um, this link is also available today on your uh, handout section. Um, so let's say we are an employer and we want to hire somebody. So you start at the first section of the We Search page and you'd say, I am a business or employer. So you click this link and hiring on our section is located under human resources, but you see how many other different options there are. So we can help with business operations and expansion, supports for new business, research development and commercialization, et cetera. But since hiring is a human resources department um, responsibility, you click on human resources. And then there are still many more um, resources available under human resources. So business immigration assistance, labor market information, compliance, downsides, and training. But for the sake of this webinar, we are clicking on hiring. Um, hiring all different types of individuals um, in the communities. Let's say for the sake of this webinar, we are trying to hire an unemployed person. So we click on this. And we are provided with two resources who would help an employer hire an unemployed individual. So let's click on Ontario Works Employer Incentives. And what you are presented with is a landing page for the program with a brief uh, description of the program um, with the contact information, an address, small information about the support, and directions via Google Maps. So we search is another. Um, tool that you can take advantage of on our website if you're looking for certain um, help or assistance with different parts of your business. We'll just go back to the PowerPoint. Show quickly. Oh, we talked about research. So we know that we've just shared a lot of information with you. So at this time, we'd like to take any remaining questions that may be out there. Um, as we close, we would encourage you to take some time to browse our website as you process what you see on the site and what you've heard today. Feel free to reach us, out to us if there's any additional support we can provide you. 
my contact information is available on your screen. And of course, this PowerPoint presentation is available for download on the handout section of the right-hand side of your screen. So additionally, we would appreciate if you could complete the brief survey that you will find on the closing screen and your responses will help us in preparing future webinars. So I'm just gonna take some time to answer some questions here. Um, it doesn't look like we have many questions, just a comment from one of my colleagues who is on the webinar. Um, so, if that is all today and nobody has any questions, I would just like to say thank you for spending your time with us today and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you.